Astra in Hollywood. Story by Julie Whitney. Illustrations by Michelle Simpson. Are you ready? Let's take a look. <laughs> To my Astra fans, be kind to your friends, both old and new, although they may be quite different from you, and lend a helpful hand whenever you can, just like Astra and Captain Dan. I hope you enjoy Astra's adventures in Hollywood. Astra was a lovely airplane, big, shiny and white, with black and red stripes down her left and her right. She'd landed last night at her new home, LA, where the weather was pleasant most every day. Her new owner, Stu, was a very nice man, and her big new hangar was certainly grand. Her first evening there, she met a few other planes. Two looked like Astra, while one looked quite strange. The first was a Learjet, lustrous and sleek, who made Astra so nervous she could barely speak. She purred, Hi, I'm Lana. Haven't seen you around. I guess you must be the new plane in town. Yes, stammered Astra. I flew here last night, all the way from Ohio. It was quite a long flight. I'm a corporate jet. Astra, my pilot's Captain Dan, and my new owner, Stu, is a travelling businessman. Well, movie stars use me to fly coast to coast. I carry the rich and famous, but I don't like to boast. I fly 600 miles per hour, Astra said to the jet. Me too, said Lana, without breaking a sweat. Astra couldn't help fretting, though Lana seemed kind. Could she ever compare to a jet so refined? Parked next to Lana was the cargo plane Hank who held 60,000 gallons of fuel in his tanks. Hank was gigantic, ten times Astra's size, and when he spoke, he looked down at her eyes. Well, hello, little plane. I'm Hank. Who are you? I I I I'm Astra, she muttered. And what do you do? I fly important packages to people worldwide, he said, gazing down with a look full of pride. I fly the skies with my pilot, Captain Dan, and my new owner, Stu, who's a nice businessman. You have just one pilot? Well, you are rather small, and it's not like you have heavy packages to haul. It takes three pilots to fly me overseas, where I'm headed tomorrow, so I must get some zzz. I suppose I will see you around, little plane, or rather, I will once I get back from Spain. Hank was very important, shipping international post. Astra couldn't stop that. She just flew coast to coast. At the end of the hangar was an odd-looking plane, with two spinning arms like a big weather vane. Astra had certainly never seen one of these and found herself wondering what could it be. Hello there, she said. I don't believe we've yet met. I'm Astra. I'm a corporate jet. I'm Helen, a helicopter, and I like to hover. And LA's rush hour is my job to cover. By keeping a lookout when flying quite low, I can also fight crime in action below. I can fly backward and sideways too. Something a plane most definitely can't do. That's for sure, said Astra. But where are your wings? Surely you need them to do all these things. My wings are these rotors and they give me lift. Amazing, said Astra. What a very special gift. Thanks, Helen said. Now I must wind down for the night. I'd chat a bit longer, but tomorrow's an early flight. Astra liked her new friends, but was still feeling down. It wasn't easy being the new kid in town. The planes in his hangar were quite different from her. Learjet Lana had an engine that purred. She flew famous movie stars to and from their sets, a much glittier life than a corporate jet gets. Hang had three pilots and flew mail overseas, and Helen could hover and help to catch thieves. 
Astra's three brand new friends did things she never could do, and by the time Captain Dan strolled in, she was feeling quite blue. Captain Dan covered her up, and Astra closed her eyes. As she began drifting off, she let out a big sigh. <gasps> The next morning, Lana seemed rather upset when the movie star complained as she boarded the jet. As her team struggled to get the bag stowed in the plane, a light bulb went off in clever Astra's brain. She had plenty of storage for the movie star's gear and was happy to help her new friend, the Leah. She said, "We'll fly the bags, and you fly the star. We are happy to help you. The trip isn't that far." Captain Dan stowed the baggage safely inside, and soon Lana and Astra took off side by side. But when the pals returned safe to LA, another crisis had already come into play. Two pilots rushed in and startled poor Hank, while the ground crew hurried to fill up his tanks. His flight was now earlier. Spain needed their mail, but without his third pilot, Hank couldn't set sail. In San Diego, pilot three was caught in a delay, but Astra was sure that she could save the day. As Captain Dan started her engine with a smile, she called, "Don't worry, Hank. We'll be back in a while." In less than an hour, Nimble Astra returned with his third pilot. There, Hank's engine could turn. Astra, my dear, you're a mighty little plane. Without you, we might not be headed to Spain. Thanks to Astra's fast flying, Hank took off on time. He tipped a wing in farewell as he started to climb. Just as Astra was bidding her new friend goodbye, she noticed that Helen looked ready to cry. Her rotors weren't turning; her engines wouldn't start. She just couldn't lift off. Bless her sweet little heart! With a worried look on her face, she tried and she tried, but it seemed that her engine had just up and died. It's almost rush hour now. What will I do? Don't worry," said Astra. We can help you out too. Captain Dan reached out to an old Navy pal who flew chopper tours all around Southern Cal. No sooner did Captain Dan and Astra depart than they were back in the hangar with Helen's new part. When her rotors were turning and she could finally lift, Helen shouted, "Thanks, dear Astra, your friendship's a gift." Astra was happy to have helped her new pals. This day had done wonders to lift her morale. Hollywood was starting to feel like a home, and with three great new friends, she would never be alone. Just then, Stu waltzed in, grinning from ear to ear, and said, "I hear you helped save the day, Astra, my dear. You're wondering about these reporters, I bet. Well, they all heard that you are one fast, clever jet." The news of your feats has spread wide and far, and you, my sweet Astra, have become a superstar. But that doesn't surprise me. You're a very special plane, and you do know how to use that wonderful brain. As the crew aimed their cameras, Astra beamed wing to wing. Captain Dan turned bright red. The spotlight wasn't his thing. The news team packed up their gear and hauled it away, while Stu smiled proudly and said, "What a day! And tomorrow we'll be flying across the U.S. It will be a long journey, so we must get some rest." Although Astra wasn't ready for her exciting day to end, she felt tired but happy as she thought of her friends. So Captain Dan pulled her inside with a tug, then put his hands on her nose and gave her a hug. As she covered her up and whispered good night, sweet Astra knew everything would be all right. I hope you enjoyed this book, and don't forget be good for mummy and daddy and subscribe. Bye bye.